there. Uh, a little bit earlier on, I told you the nominees for the Men's Player of the Year in UEFA was Kevin De Bruyne, N'Golo Kante and Jorginho. Now, our producer, Tony, said to me a little bit earlier on, this has to be the worst shortlist ever for an award of this, um, this magnitude, really. Do you agree with Tony, Darren? Mm, talking about the worst shortlist ever. I mean, De Bruyne has been quality last season. Kante was outstanding. I wouldn't have had Jorginho in there. I think there were a number of players. What, he's uh, won the Champions League and the Euros. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there are lots of players in, in his 100%. own team, I think, that were better. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it was the worst shortlist in the world. Two of the three players deserve to be there. You uh, don't, and Jorginho is the one that you think doesn't? Uh, Out of the three? Jorginho, do you think Jorginho should be there? Well, yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely. He played a key role, especially under Thomas Tuchel when he got to Chelsea. They went on to win the Champions League and okay. was massive for Italy in terms of winning the Euros as well. Okay. I mean, okay. central to it. Do you think he should be the head of Ruben Diaz at Manchester City? Probably, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Diaz has but- basically gone to City... Why is it, why be, you, you just laugh in my face? Do you understand how rude that is? <laughs> at, least, at, least, at least say a point rude? back to me. No, I just, just, just burst sorry. out laughing. Well, no, when no, I listen, I, I put my hands up. I shouldn't do that. But like, so here's my point. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't man, realize was... I did that contemptuously laughing. I'm sorry, but if I did that, um, I think as far as Diaz is concerned, I talked earlier about players having a transformative effect on a defense. And Diaz has gone to Manchester City and he's done that. And for me, if you're talking about teams who have done well, individual players who have had an impact on their side, I would talk about Diaz, I would talk about De Bruyne, I would talk about Kante. And I think those three would deserve to be in that shortlist. Emil? Yep, Kante. I I, I love De Bruyne anyway. Everyone loves De Bruyne. I think he's a fantastic player vision etc the the his his ability on the ball his ability to to pick a team up as well we've seen it several times where where city and the, and the, and and his national team probably leave him out and then when he just steps onto the pitch you know something's going to happen so when you have players like that you got to cherish them uh, and kante is just fantastic <laughs> See, I would, I would definitely have N'Golo Conte on there. Now, I know some people say didn't start the season in the Chelsea team under Frank Lampard, but I thought he was amazing, yeah. amazing in in that Champions League run in particular, but also for France when they when he had the chance to play. Of course, they didn't reach the final as many were expecting. Um, Kevin De Bruyne is one for me that I just think I think he was almost fortunate to be given. I think he got the Football Writers Award last year. Um, and I thought that was surprising ahead of Ruben Diaz. I did, I did find that surprising. And I thought the football writers maybe gave him that award more on reputation really? than what he did during last season. Because I thought Diaz in the Premier League, what that that award was given for, was again, ahead of him. Again, when you're when you're uh, attacking midfield or forward, you you're looked upon favourably, more favourably than a defender anyway. So when you're creating and you're he's bitter. <laughs> no, I'm just saying when you're when you're uh, when you're creating and you're you're scoring goals in the way that he creates and scores goals, splitting defences, etc. Everyone looks at that. Not really many people look at, oh, look at that tackle. Oh, look at that header. So um, I, look, people are going to look up look, look upon uh, De Bruyne more favourably anyway. And I'm a forward, so I will be looking at Were there any players that. that you played with that didn't, defenders, that didn't Hip- get the credit they deserved? Hippia. Sammy Hippia. Emil was F- fan- didn't get the credit he deserved. Was, was fantastic. Was fantastic. And the funny thing with Sammy Hippia, me and him have a race... And I'll beat him every single time. I, I'm sure my son would beat him. But he never got... He was so clever in the way that he never really got into them situations where, he, where he'd go and have a foot race with someone. Fantastic in the air, very intelligent in, the, in his movement and fantastic on the ball as well. And a leader. Mm. So, but in... <laughs> So you think football has a problem with with giving no, props a, to defenders? I don't think it's as a, a problem, but because again, you know your own worth. I don't think you need to look up on it and say I need to get I need to get props from you, for props from anyone else about it. You know, but again, within the team, they know what you're doing. Yeah, they yeah. know they know your worth, and they know that if they if they take if you come out of that team for a, a sustainable amount of time, they know that they're going to miss you. I love that tw- t- text here, Jorginho, Steve Russell saying Jorginho's not even in the top two. Uh, not in the top two midfield players at Chelsea. Do you agree? Yeah. At the moment, Kovacic is doing superbly well. Kanti, obviously, is the daddy at Chelsea. So that's a fair point. 
I'd put N'Golo Conte ahead of him. I, I, I would, but I, look, I think he gets into basically every single team. But I do think this is basically the form of Jorginho's life. I mean, he has been... He had a huge impact for Italy and Chelsea, and I think he does deserve some credit, doesn't he? Anyway, you let us know what you think about the top three. It's Kevin De Bruyne, it's N'Golo Conte, and it's Jorginho. 8 to 89, you can tweet us at TalkSportKO.